Advanced apes. Our planet is pretty amazing. It's the only planet in our solar system capable of sustaining complex life. There may be microbial life on planetary bodies like Mars and even Venus, and on moons like Europa and Titan, but most scientists are convinced that complex life requires a planet with Earth-like characteristics. So, if there aren't any other planets in our solar system that can support complex life, are there any other planets in our galaxy that can? In short, do we know how many Earth-like planets there are in the Milky Way galaxy? As you can probably imagine, it's really hard to detect exoplanets, which are planets outside of our solar system. Not only are the distances between solar systems immense, but planets themselves do not emit their own light. They're non-luminous objects. In fact, we only started detecting exoplanets indirectly a couple decades ago. But that never stopped natural philosophers and scientists from speculating about how many Earth-like planets may exist. In the ancient world, the majority of cultural groups thought our world was unique, one of a kind. The atomists, a group of philosophers who introduced the concept of the atom, were the first to challenge this notion in the 6th century BCE. They proposed the many worlds concept, which implied that there were an infinite number of worlds with some resembling our own. Greek philosopher Democritus, an early supporter of the concept, said that, on some worlds there is no sun and moon, in others they are larger than in our world, and in others more numerous. In some parts there are more worlds, and in others fewer. There are some worlds devoid of living creatures, or plants, or even moisture. But these ideas seemed radical and lacked empirical support. So most ancient world philosophers supported the idea that Earth was not only one of a kind, but also the center of everything. Aristotle was a proponent of this idea. He proclaimed that there cannot be more worlds than one. After Aristotle, the idea of Earth's uniqueness dominated ancient thought, and it wasn't seriously challenged for over 1,000 years. But during the Islamic Golden Age in the 12th and 13th centuries CE, there was an atomist revival among Muslim philosophers that reasoned because God had the power to create Earth, he also had the power to create other Earths throughout the universe. Either way, without empirical evidence of other star systems and exoplanets, humans generally fell on one side of two extremes in the debate of Earth's uniqueness. Either there was only one Earth, or there were an infinite number of Earth-like worlds. And the question didn't really become scientific until astronomer William Huggins and chemist William Miller studied the chemical characteristics of stars. They realized that other stars were composed of similar matter to our Sun and solar system. After their studies, they concluded, if matter identical with that upon the Earth exists in the stars, the same matter would also probably be present in the planets genetically connected with them, as is the case in our solar system. This knowledge, combined with increasingly reliable estimates on the number of stars in the Milky Way, was used to argue that other Earth-like planets were probable. In fact, astronomer Carl Sagan estimated that there could be a hundred billion Earth-like exoplanets. Yet at this point in time, no one had even detected one. Fortunately for science, this situation has changed dramatically over the past two decades because of astronomical advances in telescope technology. Finally, researchers could start to get an understanding of the types of planets orbiting other stars. And to everyone's surprise, none were Earth-like. They were actually nothing like the planets in our solar system at all. Some planets orbited pulsars, which are highly magnetized neutron stars. Others were hot Jupiters, which are Jupiter-sized worlds with Mercury-like orbits. And others were terrestrial planets, three times the size of Earth, but outside of the habitable zone of their parent star. This diversity of planets and star systems was definitely unexpected and made some scientists consider the possibility that Earth-like planets were really rare. In order to be Earth-like, a planet would need to be in a stable area of the galaxy within a stable orbit around its parent star, be in a star system with the right arrangement of planets, and the right size to retain a thick atmosphere. And early evidence suggested that planets like this would be uncommon. But more data led to more surprises. In the past few years, more and more Earth-sized planets have been found within the habitable zone of their parent star. Now some astronomers are reconsidering the possibility that Carl Sagan was right. That's informative and mind-blowing. But we have to remember that we don't know how many of these worlds have thriving biospheres, or even could have thriving biospheres. We have to wait for the James Webb Space Telescope to get data on that. Regardless, we have a better understanding of planets in our galaxy than ever before, and future research projects will help us answer questions that we can't answer today. So what do you think? 
Do we live in a galaxy with billions of Earths? Or is our planet especially rare? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Advanced Apes.